<laughs> what well, can we I'm find Carrie. out? I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast Truanon. Salty Utah Queens. Queens. <laughs> um, okay, so I just have to say that Angie K sending an Easter bunny to sneak up on the women and deliver invitations feels incredibly Greek mafia coded. And yes. I won't see it any other way. I, yeah. The sheer amount of white and light blue in this episode <laughs> was like a little intense. <laughs> yeah. I need I think Easter bunnies like have you ever looked at like old photos of Easter bunnies from like the sixties? It's always yeah. really terrifying and scary. Simon yeah. is from Austin and he said he used to he remembers there was like a festival on Easter every year, like out in some small town in Austin where everyone would dress like bunnies and run around a bonfire. Hmm. And it that hearing that has like changed the way i look at them well it's a pagan it's, holiday it's super thing. pagan yeah it's, yeah it's, it's distasteful i i wonder and i, I think maybe they explained this and i missed it uh if if it was somebody she had hired independently or it was like a bravo like one of their legions of like mm. a pas that did it uh I, probably that. it had to have been a little bit of an inside job because they were like letting the bunny in the car on the set yeah and mm -hmm. stuff and, and Which just, I think is too far. It's a risk. Don't let. Yeah, that's and and the fur gets everywhere. But it's also a risk in a state like Utah, uh, where concealed carry is very common. And somebody's seen a big <laughs> Heather foot taking out a Glock. Creature, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just could point you know, blank just <laughs> pew, on that. And it's it's uh, you know I'm just it's it speaks to the bravery of a Bravo producer to okay that idea. Um, but yeah, this was a very Mediterranean episode, which I thought was <laughs> to contrast that with the, I, I will say this, I've sampled a lot from the Greek platter of Real Housewives television shows. They're all taking place in these kind of like, at least sunny, kind of pretty places. There's some water, even if it's like kind of not, it's a little makes you feel weird. Uh, the Salt Lake City is like depressing. I've been there yeah. a couple of times. Ugh. Ugh, I, you could but, pay me to go there. Again, well, you could, but it, it, it <laughs> I, I would. It would take a significant sum to pay me to go there. It's depressing, and you know, it's. I know they're in Park City or whatever, but the con contrast that with the Greekness of it is just. It's mind-boggling. It's a crazy artistic decision. It did feel like we were in a different era. Like I felt like I was back. I I will confess that I'm not. I don't watch SLC regularly. But I did feel like I was in like 2018, like the taste level, like it feels like I'm in a universe where like road beauty doesn't exist. And <laughs> it's just like, like everyone is doing like Huda Beauty YouTube, like makeup mm -hmm. and everything is like Amazon primed, like all of their furniture and all of the decor yes. from the, the party is like, Amazon Prime to like crazy and then like burnt after being used. It's just yeah. like the most wasteful, insane middle class energy. <laughs> but like <laughs> in this like this like time capsule of like 2018, 2019 or something. It's like some very weird. Yeah, they I feel really sort of like, behind. Yeah, I, it, uh, certain trends will take like years to reach them. <laughs> it's like pioneer days. It takes like a while for a message mm. to get sent. They have yeah. 3G still there. Yeah. And I like <laughs> Angie, Angie K's like husband style is also oh very gosh. yesteryear with his the, like newsboy cap and tight, <laughs> stretchy slacks. Plaid. Slacks. Well, yeah. yeah, he, uh, he, and he, I'm sorry, there's a siren, but they're coming to shut me down before I say this ultimate truth, <laughs> which is, uh, the man is, let's be honest, he's in Greek face and that's what he even comes out and says it. But he, you know, he says people think I'm the Greek one, which you're kind of like, okay, but you're, you're giving people that impression by wearing the newsy cap. Like mm -hmm. if you had the newsy mm. cap off and you're wearing like a whatever a Utah Jazz hat or whatever, mm -hmm. people would just think you're just you're just some schmuck on the street. But because of the way he chooses to drape himself, yeah, mm. uh, he is well not drape himself, but like to squeeze these fabric. Drape is good for him. But I he's think. like he's like trying to swarth himself up. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. 
It's a yeah. bit. It's a bit. Greek face. It's a bit Greek face. Yeah. Stormy Why Ballard. one thing? Yeah. One thing I the most shocking thing to me in this whole opening montage was that Mary drives. <laughs> yeah, I thought we never whole... saw her drive the car. She could have someone drive it to a parking space, mm. and then she gets in and mm. is at the wheel. That shocked me though, because I, I to me she's never had a she's never learned she didn't need to learn to drive. She's never had a license. She might not even have fingerprints. I could see. I I would be shocked if she had a a driver's license. Uh, I I I would say she might need to drive in order to go to McDonald's drive through, but I'm sure mm. that you can have somebody drive you to McDonald's drive through, and so like she doesn't necessarily need that. Her date of um, birth on her ID would just say no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Why did you decide you needed this? Why are you asking me? Yeah. She's perfect. I love her reaction to the invitation is just to blink. It says it all. <laughs> yeah, I mean... That's all she can do. Yeah. She's never seen this. And what was her excuse for not going? It was that her house in Las Vegas was flooded a year ago. And <laughs> it has finally been... Re- in Las Ve- Your house in Las Vegas was flooded? For a year what? ago. A year but it was ago. finally repaired. So I, I need to check it out. But I'm like, I mean, you, the incredible the part of, of that of is that, like, that's uh, she just didn't want to go, but that's the only thing she could come up with. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. she's like, like, we have locusts. <laughs> there, there's got to be something else you could have come up with. Um, Whitney Wild Rose had suit. The, all the restaurants in Salt Lake are like, like Laura and I went there for a show, and they are all kind of like this, like, uh, just these vast, like, gastro pub mm. kind of eateries urban hill is the name of this one urban um, hill. and she goes the name is under whitney and justin <laughs> which i like they leave both their names that's like 4 p.m and they're both having steaks <laughs> I, <know. laughs> it's I mean literally like four o'clock in the afternoon it's like you could see cars driving around it's sunny out yeah well, with, with with bravo <laughs> it's i always got the impression from all these shows that, that they're eating like at the most bizarre times like it's yeah. like they're having like lunch at 10 a.m. and like their dinner scenes are all filmed at like yeah 3:30, uh, you know, in the afternoon because uh, that would make sense because it's cheaper probably to rent out a restaurant for a couple of hours on like yeah. off hours rather than it is like at dinner time. Yeah, and easier. They just did this. I watched an episode of the Kardashians recently where Chris and Corey went on date night and they kept being like, "It's so nice to have like a night out. It's date night," but it was winter and it was light outside so i was like their date night is occurring it is 4 p.m and yes. they're leaving at like 4 30 <laughs> and they had a full dinner with like steak red wine and desserts and i was like this is not night what's it's happening not night. yeah but they're all like a, these people are on sort of like a uh like a i i can't even imagine the hours that they go to sleep you know oh, I mean? it's got to be yeah. some weird th- like 8 30 or something at night I agree or with like you. 5 a.m. Um, and it's this is all in Park City because I feel like, I mean, I know you can you can drink in like restaurants in Salt Lake, but like it's pretty like there's no a lot of like less coffee shops right in Salt Lake it's and like soda. caffeine. It's so yeah, they it's like very weird. They have to they, well, I mean, they show in the show too, but like. It, like Mormons and just I think the just the general culture in Utah is that you just drink a big gulp of Coke Zero like <laughs> the second you wake up. Like uh-huh. it's, you have like you crack open like what's the like the giant the shit that they banned in New York like yeah. those level yeah. size sodas. Uh, but the diet version and you just like pop one of those fuck. Could you imagine drinking a diet Pepsi to wake up in the morning? Ugh. I've done it. <laughs> I was gonna back, say Karen back when I was still life. doing yeah I'd say like I'd say like 11 a.m I could start in with like a diet coke around 11 a.m but so anytime before that is like that's it's a little bad. off limits yeah Whitney goes so how's your new gig going <laughs> I Justin, just pictured him I was like a gig 
like he's like a touring musician yeah. or something. Yeah. He's playing bass <laughs> in like, like a local s- band. He's slapping his bass. No, he's in the gig economy. He's doing DoorDash. <laughs> oh. How's um, your gig? I felt really, I kind of felt bad for her. I don't know. I'm I just did too. like, when she, I mean, when she was like, all you do is look at Instagram. I was like, girl, what is he doing on Instagram? <laughs> I know. If your husband, if you catch your husband like not helping you out with your kids because he of all of the social media networks that he's spending time on, it's Instagram. Like that's weird. That's not yeah. good. Why as a man they... are you on Instagram? Yes. It is it is Why as a husband are you on Instagram? Yeah, because like mm. who are you showing this to? Yeah. You know what and... I mean? Your your male friends, what are they doing on Instagram? And we all know yeah. how their relationship started. Yes. So. But when she know, was I like, I, I, you know, the like picture she's painting of like, I, the bacon was burning and the kids were crazy and like, I'm doing all this and you are just there on Instagram. <laughs> he, like, won't even, he won't even oof. flip over the bacon because he's he's looking at, I he's know. commenting, come to Brazil on Emily <laughs> uh, latest self care post. He's commenting a, a sunglasses emoji on Emrata. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking oh smooth. God. Yeah, she goes, he goes, I'm overwhelmed with the new gig. And she goes, you're overwhelmed? I am sinking. And so I'm, I'm we were curious recently because she had this whole beauty, like, skincare line, right? And like a beauty, beauty line. Yeah, and like, wild so I guess, rose. Wild so I rose. guess that's, sounds like that's not really happening anymore. From how well, she, she said it, she doesn't have time. Yeah, she's got a. She's the the bacon's burning. She's got bacon the bacon's burning. <laughs> God forbid you flip the bacon for me. God forbid, and so and he they, also. It takes some time for bacon to burn, by the way. So I don't know if I believe her story fully about the bacon. Yeah, like it seems like yeah. it, she could have eliminated just one element from the story, and it yes. would have like sold it a lot better. Yeah, but. I'm worried for them because remember when we first met them, they like bragged about how they f- constantly. And now mm. he mentioned that he hates that he has to always initiate sex. And I was yeah. like, it's curtains for them. She's mm. like, I need to have an emotional connection, which is like, first of all, do you? So second of all, like, <laughs> like, do you can't, do you have an emotional connection with this guy at all? Cause if so, they need to lock you up in the same a, a, a certain padded room in Tucson, but it's uh, paddy wagon hours. Exactly. Yeah, it's, I think, I think she's probably just like this is what happens when you get like very therapized, which I think she has. It's mm. like she's like I'm craving emotional resonance with you, but he's like, why can't you let me come like four times a week? Well, because she, like, she says yeah, it's not all about sex for me, and he's like, well, for me it anymore. is. But he, what, I think you're right about being therapized because he used like weird therapy language back to her mm-hmm. where that I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah. so I think that they're like doing a bunch of, couples. you know, couples mm-hmm. like, you know, you need to let me un- understand my own truth in our space that we've created for our connection or whatever the f- you know, yeah. do, you think, do you think when he comes up behind her to initiate sex while she's cooking dinner and he like puts his arms around her tummy he's like still got his instagram opening like she <laughs> made comments of the kissy face to sydney sweeney <laughs> <laughs> he would comment he would definitely like because she and sydney kind of have vaguely big, similar vibes yeah mm-hmm. big jugs big, yeah we, yeah they've got they got jugs. they got, they got rocking uh rocking hooters <laughs> they do. Who is that? The girl from Euphoria? <laughs> Who is Sid? Um, she also says that he took his wedding ring off recently. So she they, no. She says that like he crazy. hasn't been wearing his wedding ring at all. And so and yeah, they got in a fight, and then he put it in a drawer, and then she looks at it every day in like a drawer or something. Wait, that her. was so sad. She was like, no. "I, you leave for the day, and I see your ring in the drawer alone, and it makes me. Sad. It's like." <laughs> Yeah, that's sad. That is like, sad. Like, you're correct. That's not good. Ladies, she's, if your husband is taking his wedding ring off and putting and it in a drawer. he's on Instagram. He's on Instagram. His he's ringless the fingers. Bacon. His, his, his phone turned sideways so he can leave the QWERTY-style keyboard message <laughs> to 
I can't think of any more women. Dua names. Lipa. <laughs> Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. <laughs> so he can so he can send us so we can get in her not the message flame, request flame, folder, flame. but the hidden request folder. Yeah. Uh so he can hidden request folder Dua Lipa with I love your tunes, babe. Yeah. And there is no clickety clack of the wedding ring hitting the f- front of the mm-hmm. iPhone. Bear. Hun- he's the he's keyboard. Che- he's cheating. <laughs> he's cheating. Um, yeah, I'm worried for them. I hope they can make it through this like tough period. But if not, we know there's more in store for the wild rose. <laughs> yeah, I think the wild rose will finally be able to bloom after mm-hmm. a, a couple of coupling. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for her. Lisa Barlow. and Angie K go to kind of a genius invention. I'm shocked that there's not more of these around, <laughs> although this is not the way that I would personally execute this kind of business, but a make your own candle store. I was actually mm-hmm. thinking, Laura, why are we not there? I know. I was like, wait, what the f? How did everyone beat me to this? Like, it looks. First of all, like Heaven. I'm worried about the scent. Yeah. Something about like scent, like Open when there's sense. too many like that. I, all mm. I can think of is cancer. I'm like, this well, is the good news <laughs> is that all those women are just doing whatever the like version of Santal 33 is that they have. So it probably all smells like some Lilabo like ripoff. Yeah, totally. Although Lisa opts for linen, and she goes, "I'll have linen and tulip." <laughs> make linen and tulips. I was like, what is, whoa, I love like learning glade. her scent profile. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah, linen, that's linen is a scent? Yeah. It's, it means it's like kind of clean linens, like, like usually it's like, like clean down and fresh. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Like, like a fab- fresh hotel uh, bed. The place was called Wick Lab, which mm-hmm. <laughs> made me, it's just like, <laughs> I can see it. That. Like I can really Easily. see the franchise taking off. I could see it on Hillhurst. I'm just going to say. I know. I could see it. I could also see it in like a North Jersey like upscale mm-hmm. shopping center. I uh, yeah. mall and her, store for sure. Mm-hmm. Her um sort of I want to call it passive aggressive because it felt like that to me, but her passive aggressive uh exchange with the the young candle clerk about uh Oh, about, about her the, son. Her son. Yeah, yeah was uh Yeah, was that was weird. She, this yes. girl comes over and she goes, are you Jack Barlow's mom? And she goes, yes. Has he told you he's going on mission? Yes. <laughs> she's like, yeah, <laughs> I've known for years. And she's yeah, she's like, like, yeah, he's been t- <laughs> talking about it for multiple years and how much he hates you. Yeah. Apparently all these women know nothing about their son's lives. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm he- worried for Lisa because I think she's truly beginning to reckon with the fact that her son does hate her and she's mm. failed him as a mother to some degree. Yeah. Sorry. My dog is like flipping out at the, everyone who walks by one sec. And that's how she talks about her son. Are you Jack Bart? Yes. She also is like, um, I, I mean, she kind of openly admits like I failed him. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, actually, it was kind of sad. She's like, she does kind of say like, Oh, uh, I can't remember what she said, but it's like, oh, said, I... I'm not, not winning any Mother of the Year awards. Yeah. And I was like, this is a shocking realization that is not given the amount of, like, depth that it really deserves. Mm. You yeah. also weren't, weren't in the running anyways. So no. I'm not really sure why you're surprised <laughs> to, to lose that, but... I think it's, it's kind of sad to was. find out that, like, or to, like, come come to terms with like your failures as a mother at, from a like barista at wick lab <laughs> it's like oof yeah and like <laughs> the idea of like you never really know anyone including your children mm-hmm. it's like yeah. very oof. It's do you think that she just drowned herself in the most like vicious <laughs> sense that she could she could conjure up yeah. citrus afterwards citrus. she just this most citrus thing you have yeah, also, when they're explaining the candle, she's also it's like she is the queen of Sundance, and I feel like one mm. can't be both a great mother. That's so you true. Either are a great mother, or you're the queen of Sundance. Well, you're you have to, events. you have to, you have to embrace the dialectic of being the queen mother, mm-hmm. yeah. and then the yes, and then only can you kind of <laughs> well, he could, embody you know what? both. <laughs> Let's talk about his his culpability here too. Because yeah. he could have gone on to become the prince of Sundance, but now where's he getting sent to? 
We don't know yet. We, we don't, don't know, know yet. yet. I know that she was like, I hope he gets sent to Milan. Um, it's not going to be Milan. It's not going to be Milan. No, dude, he's going to get... I was on Catalina once, and there was Mormon missionaries there. I'm like, can't you finish this in a day? Like, No, that's yeah. crazy. That's only a 800. long time to be just on that island. <laughs> yeah, like they exiled you here, dude. Like, what are you going to do come winter? Yeah. Uh, but it's Whoa. like, yeah, his is getting sent to... I don't even Dubai. Hopefully, <laughs> be yeah. knocking on hotel suites. Macedonia. Also, seems really hateful to her. Like the vibe that he had when they entered Angie K's Greek party. Mm-hmm. I was like, be Oof. grateful. Like you're acting like a d- to your mom. And then I kind of saw into his future as like this devout, like Mormon dude. And I didn't like what I saw. Who kind of like hates women? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's kind of, he's already kind of getting, that's what happens when you get like, p- when you're sort of pink, it's like pink clouding in AA when you're like, everything's yeah. amazing and you're sort of holier than thou. And I think he's having that with this initial like high of being part of this thing. Yeah. Well, this while not dealing with the very clear resentment that he holds for his mother. A hundred percent. Which and is just like, yeah. You know, dismissing her as like frivolous almost a lot of very bad mother child relationships in this episode actually because i'm I'm remembering yeah ld in the later on at the party is like really upsetting i will will say once he he goes on mission if you knock on enough doors you might have (laughs) with a foxy older woman and or an older could, man or older man he could have a call me by your name type situation but like in albania um mm. and, yeah, call me by your name but the mormon version albania, the Al- mormon albanian call me by your name would be crazy and like that could <laughs> call me by your lot. mania in <laughs> albania yeah <laughs> like that could like uh, he heal him in a way that w- that would be completely unforeseen. Certainly not the kind of healing that's available to like whatever therapy these people are getting on the show. Mm. But I think he needs some distance, and also maybe he'll get kidnapped. Like I think getting kidnapped <laughs> by like Getty, a Getty uh, style, y- yes, Getty style, or by like a bandit or something. Uh, yeah, would be would be like <laughs> kill bandit. I think Albanian him being band. held for <laughs> ransom, <laughs> him being held for ransom would do their whole family a lot of good. So and no us together. viewers at home, think of the storyline arc. That would be yeah. great. That a would be a guys- arc for Lisa, a, a chance for her to step up and use mm. her like <gasps> her yes. delegation skills in order to. Oh my god! Do like a like a swap for money yes yeah i think what she could pull i mean look for her you know with her skills as the queen of sundance think of what she could pull, pull together right a lot. oh I my know. god and we would get to see that but in service of getting her child back i mean it's right there it's like I taken think, but with yes. Lisa instead. <laughs> yeah <laughs> why you did you take son. him what you do you want with son. him oh my god he's been you taken have him. give him back <laughs> what'll it take like a, a close-up on her like cracked overfilled lips just uh, next to a cell phone um i i'll say this i think if you did kidnap the progeny of one of these uh, women and like in, in real life you kidnap them but you filmed it i think you have like a not impossible chance of pitching it to bravo and maybe getting immunity and some money and possibly the ransom because if you just start taping them all the time as like a, as like a, a, a house made spinoff i think yeah. they would i think they're brave enough to yeah but i think it would enough. take Tax someone under it would take someone under andy to do it andy wouldn't do it yeah. no it would take someone who wants to usurp andy yeah like which a would, now yeah. we've got a like fun little like succession thing going on so we've got like the not just the the um storyline with the bandit stealing the child Jack. and the, the the Utah Taken arc, but we also have that being orchestrated from the inside of the Bravo uh, universe itself by the uh, maniacal and career-obsessed underling of Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen's mm. cell phone buzzing underneath a towel at, at the... Uh, Soho Equinox in the steam room. 
And he's like ignoring it because he's busy being just like dispassionately fl- filleted by like the most muscular guy you've ever seen. <laughs> that's, and then he like that's finally so <laughs> uncannily real. Like that's crazy. He finally I think comes that actually, out of the steam yes. room that happens. And, and looks at his phone. And he's like, no, like no! Sven, what are you doing? And, but yeah. Sven's not answering. But he's like walk. It cuts to Sven, and he's like walking into Andy's desk and like taking his name name i don't know what he would have you know his little like yeah. lawyer thing on the end of the desk <laughs> taking that off throwing it on the ground stomping the on new it spinoff yeah. like god, bravo Sven. call us taken we have sons. it written yeah taken oh my god well so angie oh god, didn't invite Mar- him the only thing we find out is that angie <laughs> <are you> <laughs> I, I called her andrew angie. angie that's kind of greek sounding yeah. Andri is not inviting Meredith to her Greek Easter party. Um, Meredith, Meredith pretends she doesn't care. Oh, she's got to do the Glad, the Glad Awards. Awards. Which, yeah, Glad. not great look for Glad. <laughs> <laughs> Love the one woman accused of like spreading vicious yes. rumors Seriously. about <laughs> this straight hairdresser. Oh, I'm sorry. So she's trying to make another gay person, and you think that's <laughs> she's she's trying to birth one more gay person to the world, and you think that's wrong. <laughs> she's a convert. She's convert. She's a, she's exactly. doing her mission she's, work. She's, yeah, she's con- she conversion therapy. And you think so? You're saying you think there should be one less gay person in the world? Exactly. Yeah, we could use. Yeah, I can say it. <laughs> um, we Robert can we talk Jr. about Mary and her son. Oh yeah, Robert Jr. and Mary's relationship confounds and astounds. What he, is going on here? I'm so freaked out by them guys. What? I'm, he talks like a baby with her, and it's really yes. weird. And he's was like, was he high? Maybe Fence? he's so she she sits him down. They're like both in their PJs in her green carpeted room, and she goes, <laughs> she goes. So why am I hearing rumors that you're married? <laughs> and I'm like, the weirdest thing to hear a mother say to her her only child that she lives with. No, that you say that. With. That's the weirdest thing. And then her going later. Well, I kind of remember you wearing a tuxedo, which is no, like the that's weirdest the thing. weirdest. No, thing. so she asked him, "Why am I hearing rumors that you're married?" And he goes, "Oh, I don't know." He's like looking down the whole time. He like he's yeah. asking, he's afraid of her. He is, a, but mm-hmm. he has the mannerisms of yeah, like a slightly abused, like maybe just verbally a abused child. child. Yeah, but he's like, but also one who realizes the camera's on and is kind of like l- yucking it up for the cameras because yeah. he was like kind of laughing about it in a way that was like I don't know, like why are we making this a thing? Like it was yeah, it was because, very self aware in a weird way. Kind of, he's like kind of were married I went to the courthouse a year ago <laughs> yes, yes. and then he and his wife live with Mary and and she says you're gonna have to she goes I love she goes you think you made the right decision and he's like yeah I think so and then that was kind of the extent <laughs> that of that was it that was also it. When she's saying I'm hearing rumors, I think like the lamps and the couches are telling her. Like I don't think she's because she doesn't leave her house. She's like I'm hearing things from like the other the talking furniture in our house that yeah. you are married. And apparently the day they got married, they saw her and were wearing a tuxedo and a nice dress, and they ran away from her. It's she so goes, I remember weird. you running away from me. I was like sprinting away from Mary. Yeah, it was just like is, who, that happens ro- a lot. I think like rocking yeah. back and like you opening. I imagine it's a yeah. house of horrors. Like, could you imagine waking up at three a.m. to piss in Mary's house and like going into the hallway and like in a horror movie, kind of walking down and hearing like a like rocking back yeah. and forth. The rustle of a McDonald's bag is like a single fry is taken <laughs> Tumbleweed. out and eaten loudly. <laughs> Yeah, it's giving psycho for sure. Like she will be dying in the rocking chair, looking after them. Like, does she? It's... Does she? Is she not have a church anymore? Did the think, did the? I think funds, it went underground. The yeah, fu- we haven't oh. figured out what's going on with the church. IRS I, problems, perhaps. Yeah, I think they moved. <laughs> operations have been moved underground. It's like less in the public eye now. But they have multiple real estate properties so i think they have churches around so i think it's just the utah one that and is she still god or did she give up that title oh yeah yeah once you're god you're always god do do we think that she's grooming robert jr to be the new god (laughs) yeah is he heir to (laughs) is he heir apparent uh i could see that but i think that 
Well, actually, no. He seems insane as well. So I'm like, I, well, I don't know. Is it insane to secretly get married? Possibly I, not. But it is insane to live with your mother if she's married. It's uh, weird to live married. with your mom with your wife and yeah. slash girlfriend and then secretly get married and continue to live. Yes. At the mom's house. And it's and for the mom to be like, okay, like to to not really have an opinion on it and then kind of let you live there anyways. If, cause it seems like, Oh, Mary doesn't want this. But I think as a parent, like if you don't want that and your child's like over 18, you're like, well, you can go find an apartment or like get a job or go live yeah. your yeah. married life. But it just seems to be like, it is. It's a, a lot. Fine. And also, also he's at the end of this combo. He's like stammering a little cause he's nervous. And she goes, yeah. use your words. <laughs> and it felt That's very like my favorite thing to say which is like such a terrible thing to say to people use your words but it felt like it was like this strangely deep voice it felt like the Bene Gesserit and Dune yes. doing the, <laughs> using the voice yes use yes, your words yes. she would do great I mean she could be if they inserted Mary into just like sort of um, high minded science fiction films I think that would be really like she she's would a, she's she, a reverend mother She's a mm-hmm. reverend mother. Yeah. Like she is like, she is kind of something out of like some obscure science fiction book or something, you know, like people should worship her on another planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I'm sure I, they do. <laughs> I think she's yeah. in conversation with like other beings mm-hmm. and entities. Yeah. 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 yeah like she, she has like a kind of, yeah, like a, um, like kind of matrix E like, uh, what was you know in the Matrix where they go to the crazy like cave pit and they're all dancing and doing like weird like mud. Zion Z- mm-hmm. thank you Zion mm-hmm. of course she kind of had wow and Zion of course the Mormon course. connection there Utah wow yeah. oh my god wow but she kind of has she's kind of given some of that energy of like she could be in some weird kind of like um, I don't know like the Oracle. She's in cult or yeah, interdimensional cult yoga dancing. I could see her mm-hmm. too. I, she, mm-hmm. I, I feel like she actually is one of the people in the Matrix. Like you know how they have to go meet like the Merovingian and like all uh-huh. the other wow. like or the Oracle and stuff. Like I <laughs> feel like she is she is one of the characters, <laughs> the, the Merovingian. Um, she is one of the characters <laughs> that like Neo has to go meet in like an alternate, and it's it's Mary, and like her words don't make sense. She kind of speaks. <laughs> in riddles and it's like she's like all of her spoons like turn the other way like bend like mm-hmm. in the, but know, she's still trying wrong. to eat with them like yeah. Yeah. use your words <laughs> use um, your words but she's you, so vague you interpret things mm. it just like you find meaning yeah however however you define it in 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 like the 60s or 70s she would be the cause of like Maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty people's deaths in like a mess. Like she could have been a oh for sure like Jonestown. Jo- jo- she oh, well, like yeah. a mi- I don't think she could have done a full Jonestown because I don't think she would want to go that far from home. But like no. I think she could have done like a kind of local Jonestown, a living gate. room Jonestown. Yeah, if yes. you could get enough of the sprinter oh bands together and fill them with people. Uh, Did you see like a bunch of Nikes laid out on the green carpet? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I was picturing like just kind of people slumped over on the furniture yes, around yes. that living room, <laughs> yeah, but then they all them. become part mm-hmm. of the furniture. Yeah, she's just <laughs> berating them, but in like <laughs> like sort of she speaks a different like you smell like hospitals like a different it's a new kind of English mm-hmm. like but it's, she but speaks, it's so good it's so it's good so and specific good. I mean yeah. it's so iconic good. she is iconic in her way I have a theory that meredith is like the only person that is even allowed in her house like they I yes feel like meredith has to be used by producers to even get in there to like film with her yeah she i totally agree just say no at certain times when she came over i was like oh wow they because i'm always like why are they so close but then yeah. seeing them together you're like oh they actually make a lot of sense as friends like they have they have a banter Mary, like, s- Meredith is kind of the only one that can, like, tease her a little and, like, yeah. rib Mary a little, and Mary accepts it. And she's, like, the nice... She's always... She's the only person that Mary is nice to. 
Because she sees in she sees in in Meredith a uh, like a fallen worshiper of God, mm. Mm. and she she's just like she she wants to bring her back into the fold. She might kill her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Meredith comes Meredith comes over and Mary's still in the same pajamas. It's a long day for her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and Mary comes in and she goes, "I'm going through a lot today." And then Meredith goes, "Well, I'm here for you, and I want to hear what's going on." <laughs> <laughs> she goes well i've been uh asking robert about his m- marital status and <laughs> <laughs> it's like so what weird. did he say and she basically alludes that like he is kind of married he's kind what does of that married. mean kind of married when he's like yeah we're kind of married i th- kind maybe we forgot something on the license <laughs> it's like what yeah yeah I'm it's not- like you go to the court like as someone who recently did this like it's it's a process like you have to like si- it's not like you can't just be like oh like maybe they didn't maybe they didn't mail in their certificate yeah so maybe they didn't yeah ever so they're fully like get, so they're not yeah well or maybe they're just like maybe they just don't want to put labels on things <laughs> that's you know true I mean? like maybe they're mm-hmm. maybe they're married yeah. for insurance purposes but also being under 26. So, well, maybe they're, they're married poly. for their po- Exactly. Maybe they're an open marriage. Definitely. Da- yeah. Well, I think everyone in this is in a kind of open marriage, but like, yeah, it's uh-huh. the maybe is weird. They don't wear rings then. Right. Cause that would be a pretty big tell be to see if they're married. <laughs> True. <laughs> so there's, there's many people who are married in this show that are just not wearing wedding rings. Yeah. I would love for them to be in like, like a poly relationship but then find out that also all their boyfriends and girlfriends also live in mary's house (laughs) and she doesn't know that that's happening either i think mary should yes yeah 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 like just like hatch a bunch of people like spiders Mm -hmm. yeah i feel like it could be sort of a parasite situation where there's like people living in the house without her knowing yes she um, either knows everything or knows nothing. Nothing. But I don't. Get, I think it's nothing. I think, yeah, I do yeah. too. I think she's. I think she's privy to some hidden truths that, like, we couldn't even like that would make our eyes bleed if we tried to like, <laughs> take them. But like, I inconceivable. Yeah, yeah. Like something like so, like obscene yeah. and like and but holy that like we would we would literally like she can that. understand tongues yeah yes. like yeah yes yeah. like that's just regular that's where she got you smell like hospital from she heard yeah. a guy say it writhing <laughs> around on the ground like she can speak to snakes all that kind of stuff but like it's i don't think that like she knows what like um a napkin is you know what no I mean? Unless, like Mm-mm. like conceptually she might understand that it's in front of her to use it because there is liquid on face but like i don't think if you asked her what a napkin it was she would she would sort of hem and she might have dementia now mm. that i'm saying interesting this. she might have she I, a little you know, still alice early <laughs> Early onset. Yeah, early onset <laughs> dementia or cult leader. Or cult leader. Or just or a both. combination of both. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, Meredith starts talking about herself and she's like, these rumors that Angie's accused me, I just, they're so against everything I stand for. My son is gay. I'm a, which I was like, whoa, she actually said the word gay. Yeah, the first time that's ever been acknowledged. She outed Brooks. Brooks and then she goes and I'm also on the host committee of the Glad Awards <laughs> mm-hmm. she says that's that so twice. great for you that's so great for you yeah Mary goes <laughs> oh that's great that's great for you I was like she hates gay people <laughs> yes. she, she, hates, she both hates gay She's people like shuddering like, Mary so clearly hates gay people but also there's no way Mary knows what Glad is there is no. absolutely no way Mary no. goes with Gladys. Oh, that's great. That's awesome yeah. for you. <laughs> that's great, great for Mary. you. <laughs> that was so weird. I was really like, ooh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> um, the Glad Award, she thinks it's like Glad uh, trash bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet that smells nice. It's also goes, just funny. Like, who's getting a Glad Award in 20? We were, we actually just, we, we were looking at Brett Ratner stuff. And uh, he got a GLAD award. Like he had said uh, <laughs> no. the gay yeah. F word 
very publicly uh, in like 2013. And then the next year was like, glad he won the Glad Ally of the Year award. Yes. As he's trying to like- I, I need a list of every Glad Ally of the Year. Because I bet there are some <laughs> That's real amazing. fucking names on there. Mary should get a Glad Award. She should get a Glad Ally of the Year I feel year like award. Mary really would should. hold her own Glad Awards and have all of her like her like yeah. teapot and her uh, would be would attend and like her like bath mat. <laughs> <laughs> she would her, like set her up her dog. yes yeah. her audience and she would like get up there and accept her Glad Award like accept her like hairbrush and it yeah. would be like her Glad Award and then she would give her like homophobic speech that would then turn the <laughs> audience against gay people. Yes, yes, <laughs> well, yes. listen, this is see, this is why this is gay. I mean a lot of gay icons are people that hate us so like she mm. like an ironic gay so she's like a perfect candidate for like she's she's wretched but like <laughs> you're like gays like women that a lot of a lot of us like women that would be mean to us well she mm. also is is technically queer because she does practice what in many societies would be thought of as an uh alternative sexuality um oh which is of course <laughs> uh incest and so it's like <laughs> she um like she is other, i, I the mean eye. the most expansive definition yeah. of mm. you know not you know it's mm. not let's just say it's not a cis heteronormative relationship right. it's sort of True. like it's it's a little different you know what i mean the and other so, eye, an LGBTQI. Mm, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Mary. Yeah, yeah. Mary. They make her a little different. They do. <laughs> she goes. So I. And Mary goes. Well, did you get the invite to the Easter brunch? And then Meredith goes. And she didn't invite me. And if, and honestly, that weekend I can't even attend because I am going to LA for the Glad Awards. I'm on the. <laughs> I'm the host. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. That's great. Mary she goes. Well, again. I'm not. I'm not going either. <laughs> then I'm, I'm not absolute, going. I'm not going. Angie's brunch, by the way, is like, I need to be there. I know it's like, it's just, I yearn for like snow and like a pig Mm. outside and like, I just want to like, a lamb. Yeah. And like, Mm -hmm. I yearn, like, I think my like lapsed Catholic like craves like rituals sometimes. And I, not like the doctrine, but like the actual like the spooky witch stuff. And I like crave that pagan. Um, And it just looked really like, comfy in her like really nouveau riche house um, i crave a all you can eat buffet of mm. just greek food yeah. yeah yeah i will say like of all the kind of like big bravo staged events this one looked like it had like real people at it yeah it had. you love know it, it didn't feel like it was like oh maybe there was like mad extended family here and this was maybe it's like feels more Greek than Bravo in a way, even with its mm-hmm. like horrible decorations and everything. Yeah, she brings. Oh, and I just loved all the wads of one dollar bills. The wads to do. of oh ones. My God. What, what is it called? The Zeb Zabika. Never heard of that in my life. Yeah, I didn't. I've been to like a Greek wedding, and they we danced in a circle and then people would get in the middle, but I don't recall there being cash thrown at anyone, but (laughs) there could have been cash. I've been to what I guess in retrospect now, I guess you could call it a a Greek nightclub in LA called cheetahs. And you definitely threw dollar (laughs) bills at people who were dancing there. Um, There was guys. Do you guys remember when Lindsay Lohan opened a nightclub in Athens? No, oh, yes! It no, still it wasn't exists. Athens. Was it oh, Athens? it does? I you thought confirm? it was Athen- Lohan, Club Lohan is in Athens. I uh, I almost went when I was in Greece <laughs> this summer, but then when I was looking at their Instagram, the vibes were so bad. Like, it's like... <laughs> All men, just a sea yes. of men, like they crowded think, oh, next Lohan's to each other. There, there were bad then, vibes at Club Lohan. <laughs> yeah, you don't <laughs> say. And then all the women that worked there looked like Eastern European 
call girls that yeah. had, and i was just like I, yeah. this seems dark it's a big commitment to go down that road um yeah. i my favorite pick, it's it's but it, i will say this the ancient enmity between the greeks and the turks could be solved by the one and only Lindsay lohan because mm-hmm. not only does she have these business interests in greece she is also close friends with uh controversial turkish leader uh, Tayyip Erdogan and and is yeah. is, is uh, pictured hugging him in a photograph and so with one of yeah. her many U, uh, UAE suitors she kind of did a Sex in the City movie thing she uh, did and mm-hmm. a bit of a but darker life, yeah. life. <laughs> kind of a mix probably I guess with between I've never seen Entourage but what I imagine Ugh. or the Idol and Sex in the City movie mm. experience. Yeah. She was sort of shilling. There was a period in like 2016 where she was like trying to do sort of an Angelina. It was like, I think she's fully sober now, which is great. Like she's has a baby. Like she got her life together. But like, I didn't know that she, I think she converted to Islam. Yeah, she I did. Think, yeah, yeah. Which is, I think it's worked out great for her because she's like, <laughs> it's doing a great, really well. It's a good look for her, but she's also like friendly with Putin. Which is yeah. so that's the funny. most Lindsay Lohan thing ever. Yeah. I'm sorry, she's like, Lindsay Lohan being friends she's, with Vladimir I'm sorry, Putin she's like friendly. makes sense. Why did she just end it with she's friendly? <laughs> she's a nice person. <laughs> she's, she's a nice per- <laughs> But she was doing this thing where she was like going on, um, doing like a Princess Diana like landmine thing for Syrian yeah, refugees. I remember that, and and was like sort of shilling for the turkish government being like they've let in so many syrian yes, refugees like look at all these women look at all these women and children i'm meeting and she was wearing like the you know traditional garb and she was like it was very it was like and she was praising turkey and it was, she was like also i think she just had a couple of lost years on the old yeah. Arabian peninsula and like yeah. that led yeah. her into some weird play like she was doing research drugs that like that will again it's like mary style like if you thought about yeah. them your, your ears would like start leaking pus um she is like well also yeah. it was like god it, bless her prior to that she had attempted a kind of like meta comeback i feel like a couple times like she was like oh i'm doing this brett easton ellis thing or whatever Ooh. which is like gonna be mm. this this was like a long time ago That's you know what dark. i mean there was but that it, that came after the Oprah comeback. Yes. Too. Oh, so there, wait, but there she... was these sort of like kind of um, almost like pl- pl- like uh, playing into like hipster kind of sensibilities comeback style. Do you know what I mean? Like not yeah. meant to be mainstream, kind of like indie ironic comebacks uh-huh. that she's like tried a couple times that just like didn't pan out for whatever personal or whatever reasons or professional yeah. reasons and so she like can't kind of like do that again even though i still think people want it from her like yeah. she was i feel in, like she was she, gonna do a netflix thing and then i don't know what happened she did she did she did, a, she did a christmas movie and she was she actually at the end there's a big kiss at the end and they used a double because she wasn't she because of islam I think because, because of, of Islam or her husband is <laughs> either she is or her husband is and she she didn't want to like disrespect him. So wow, their, their religion or his beliefs. So they I think there was a full double while she was being kissed. She was, was like, in the Brett Easton Ellis thing, Liz, that unlocked a memory. I believe she was in that with a uh, highly <laughs> actor, James Dean. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Wow. What a throwback. I feel like movie. Lindsay could kill it if she started a like based trad wife account. Yeah. That was like, but like, yeah. you know, Islamic. Yeah. She, Especially with like a baby now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, and her red hair. West. Like she could totally do a lot of like trad wife content that people yeah. would That's really a great like. thing Pivot. about being a woman is that you always have the opportunity to have a baby and completely yes. rebrand. Yeah. yeah, we forgive. You, well, you're the either, great thing about being a whore. guy, yeah, is that you, you can have a baby have and then you can leave town. <laughs> <laughs> you can just peace. Dee Dee Ramone, Dee Dee Ramone's got like forty kids in South America, dude. It's just he's. It's sometimes you just have the kid and you say, hey, you know what? You're gonna grow up to be great, but I'm not gonna <laughs> see it. And I love you, kind of, or I would have if things were different. Uh, and I wish you the best. This will stay with you 
I'll change. I'm changing your life forever right now. And then you're just, <laughs> I'm gonna let you take it from here. Yeah, you got it. I will, you, you're strong. I will. I love you, ish, big man. Like you're gonna do great things possibly if things go certain directions for you. But, <laughs> don't keep me updated. But don't. I don't need to know about it. And I'm just on to the next. On to the next port of call. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of dads, Angie's dad is adorable. He's mm. this Greek widow yes. who has seven kids, and he was an immigrant and raised a good brood. And he's just like a sweet man who I don't know if he ever remarried after her mom passed. He said um, he's still single. He's still single. Oh, he's single. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a catch. He's a catch. He's kind of hot. He is the only normal looking person in yes. the brunch. <laughs> yeah, and in, so in it's, the two mile it's, radius. It's actually kind of <laughs> jarring when he comes on screen because you're like, oh my God. It looks like how it's CGI looked in like the late 90s or something. Yeah. Like a cra- like Jar Jar Binks. And you're like, that's not real. And it's, yeah. Yeah, it's the opposite <laughs> totally. effect where like he looks too real to be in there. Uh, yeah. no, he's, there's a mother that he connects to. Monica's mom, who is LD. A, LD. LD. Well, who, so Mary calls oh. really quick, calls yeah. to say her excuse for not coming. And she goes, she goes through the whole, like, my house in Vegas flooded a year ago. I have to go check it out. And Angie's like, okay. Um, and Mary goes, you know, I, I just, I feel bad. And that's real. And, <laughs> and she goes, well, I'm yes. really glad that you're able to feel something. And then Mary kind of chuckles and they say goodbye. But at the very end, like right before they hang up, you just hear Mary go, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's she's no longer in that. She started a different conversation with, yeah. Yeah, with the she's, armoire at that point. <laughs> she's ta- yeah, she's talking to her urn. <laughs> she's like fully seen the armoire's doors open and like tell, yeah. her, tell her secret truths. Yes. It's like in Beauty and the Beast with all of it the really like is. talking. It is. Pops. <laughs> like, it's a yeah. little bit Beauty and the Beast, a little bit Ellen Burst in Requiem for a Dream. Yes. Yes. 100%. yes. Yeah. Imagine, oh imagine her in. The Beauty and the Beast universe. Oh my oh. God! Wrecking for a Dream. You oh, what it? Maybe no. It's purely natural. I was gonna say maybe it's a synthetic sort of dementia that she has. But I no, don't I think so. And when God, she said God did that, when she said and that's real, she had to say it so that she was like acknowledging this is a that's real thing real. I'm saying as opposed <laughs> oh, to like when, when, when you're supposed to like like name three things around you or whatever. Yes. <laughs> And that's real. It's like and a, like cement a ladder. Your own reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's a grounding <laughs> exercise for her. Um, Heather brings lemon. Nine lemons. Nine lemons. Liz, Liz offered to bring lemons to the Zoom. Um, a, I'll say this: was she that brought a, a couple of watermelons too. Oh my god! Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. I feel that. bad that because I was like, is is that like a refer? That like, was she trying to make? A big splash, or what did I miss there? Could be a Greek like a, thing. I think it was maybe a Greek. I think she like did some a little research because Heather's always like an overachiever type. Yeah, and she. I think I it was, was some sort of. Well, I thought it was like maybe a Greek thing, but then I thought that it was like a reference to Shannon Bedore saying, "When life gives you lemons, put nine in a bowl." Like I felt oh. like it had some sort of oh. significance to that. But like, what is like what? But why what's nine? The... Why? Yeah. And why Shannon? Why now? Ooh, yeah. I gotta be honest with you guys. I looked up nine lemons Greek on Google. And the first thing that comes up is Heather Gage lemons for Angie. I can't say her last name's brunch. And I'm not seeing anything. Or could it have just been that she Greek was Easter. bringing, bringing lemons counted them. And it's like making a joke. Like oh, I've brought so many lemons. I brought nine lemons. Maybe? Yeah, dude. No, nine lemons is not a thing. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Put nine yeah. in a bowl. But I yeah. think put that nine Shannon had a healer tell her that she needed oh. to put nine lemons in a bowl Whoa. to so like, like a- enhance energy in mm. her household or something. And so then it became her tagline for a season. That's right. Yeah. And th- but so I thought maybe it's a nod to that, or it's like just nice That's- to bring nine lemons. It's that very would be inside crazy. baseball. Yeah. It yeah. does feel a little inside and also a little passive aggressive. Is it like we need to change the energy in this house? But it's also like <laughs> maybe I'm sorry, they don't like brought each other. me nine That's lemons. True. I'd be like, oh great, so cool. I'm gonna use two of these and throw seven away. Yeah. 
Thank you. N- nine lemons um, in a bowl. Not this is a feng shui thing, I guess. Where it okay. says East meets West. Yeah, it's um, the number nine is a lucky number. And lemons are important, mm. is what I'm gathering. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she saw something on Pinterest and she was did. like, That's, "Yeah, okay." She saw a yeah. card on Pinterest with like the curly handwriting that was like, "Bring nine lemons to your next event, like party." <laughs> yeah, it's like a longevity. Uh, nine is the number of happiness and longevity, and lemons oh, are a God. fruit we associate practically only in a good way. Hmm. And nine mm. lemons in a bowl provides positive decoration and also cleanses the room of negative energy. I think it was nine like lemons a slight... in a bowl is like a, such a memoir title. Yeah, nine lemons in a bowl. Nine and it also in a bowl. didn't work because the energy was pretty bad. I Pain would say. Is. Yes. Well, Heather it goes to Sean. Turn. She goes, "You look amazing. God, where do you get your such nice clothes?" And he goes, "My gay boyfriend." <laughs> so I was like, "All right, I like that." My gay yeah. boyfriend. That was fun. <laughs> If you want to deny the like, truth, he's also gay for saying that. Yeah, he's super gay, yeah. but like, I like that he was like lolling with it a little. I heard he's this. Let me it. ask you. Let me ask you a question here. I heard a guy uh, share about his experience with drugs and alcohol recently, and the entire time he kept saying, uh, "And I had gay." He would. He was much of it was about <laughs> his sex life, and he kept referring to sex that he had. It took me a while to figure out he was gay. Because he kept referring to all sex that he had as gay sex. And is that, that's, you don't that's, say that. Uh, I think you can like, sex. I think you qualify like in the beginning if you want to, like I'm gay for reference. And then when you mm. say I've had sex, people will assume with a man or a woman. If you're a this woman. This was just like a big Staten Island guy is like, yeah, first time I drank, first time I had gay sex. And I'm like, well... <laughs> Have you ever had any other kind? Like it seems like that was kind of like the main <laughs> gay sex. You, you that were rocking very with that the whole time. Staten Island gay way yeah. to put yes. it is like I feel like all Staten Island gays say it's not sex to them; it's gay sex. It's gay sex. So his gay it's boyfriend, true. his yeah. gay boyfriend. Mm. I'm wondering if this was at a certain meeting that I'll bleep out, but was it up that you heard this? No, but it was a. But it was. Oh, a okay. Meeting. Okay. <laughs> Oh, mid- okay, yeah, that makes sense. I, that's where you would see someone like that. Um, but yeah, Angie makes a speech, and she's like, "I've always loved this. I've always loved this holiday and what it represents—the resurrection." She goes, "And like Christ, we will rise. Our family will rise." I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> you're comparing yourself to Christ yeah. in the in the in that your husband? There were rumors about your husband had, like, yes." Which, like, I by the way, those. in that in that context, you don't want to reference rising, number no. one. Yeah. But no. also, the way that she described what 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 Jesus went through in that cave was like he managed to rise. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I don't think that's he wasn't like try like he couldn't do it, and then one day he was able to like summon the strength to get up. That's like yeah. not oh, how Liz, it how it all happened in there. Liz, Liz, think about this because I think you're reading that in the exact opposite way. She could have been making a painful for her long metaphorical speech about her and her gay husband's sex life. Because the cave, oh. I'm not trying to convey whatever here, struggling to rise. Her and cave. she's sort of hoping for a resurrection, maybe a conversion, much like Christ's disciples brought upon the Roman Empire, a conversion possibly to, well, I guess Jesus didn't go back in the cave. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That it kind of, you know, I'm not saying she's great at metaphors Jesus here, came in the cave. Yeah. Jesus, he rose Jesus from would, the dead. He flooded the cave. <laughs> when he just busted <laughs> in that cave. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's true. She. Got, I also love the cake with the Greek Orthodox, like, yes. oh my God, yeah. painting. I was like, I need this. That also, was a cool I, cake. I would say the, the priest they had, in my head, all Orthodox priests are like, and like the big yeah. beard and like yeah but he was like bright he had like bright black on he Strange. was giving cunt he was he yeah. 
I and also then, love Lisa Barlow still wearing her sunglasses indoors. I know. to her during that, and she's a full, like, aviator, mirrored aviator lens. It was insanely bright in there, I will <laughs> yes, say. It, it is, yeah. like, the whitest. Like, the walls the white. were, like, optic white. The, the, yeah. the tablecloths were optic white. It looked like... Like it was like being inside a veneer. It was so <laughs> fucking bright in there. It, it was. was crazy. And the snow outside is refracting that light. It's like being yes. in a, it, it kind of feels like a big dentist's office. And it looked something. it just looked like, yeah, like everything had been like stripped with bleach or something. And yeah, a like, deep cleansing. Yes, totally. Um and Heather goes, Christos Anisti. And then the priest, I was like, he's going to start exercising Wild Rose. <laughs> what if, if they have like a full like demonic battle where that would he's be like, so exciting when like they're like going head to head, like like a really like physical, not like the exorcism in the movie with the little girl with the with, you know, tied to the bedpost. But yeah. she's like fully like <sighs> and he's like hitting her on the head and like, Wild Rose her in back. the corner. Yeah. In the uh, corner of the ceiling. Oh, yes. Hereditary style. Yeah. I think he should exercise LD, who is most certainly okay. possessed Trailing. by <laughs> somewhat of a demon. Yes. That demon oh, was huh. on her blazer. That brooch that she bro- was wearing. Yes. <laughs> if I that- may... If I may Crazy. tell it, I, I, I knew a guy who was very Tom Sandoval, uh, Johnny Depp style guy named mm. LD. <laughs> and the entire time I thought it stood for like Lawrence Daniels or something. <laughs> um, and then he tried to get me and three girls that I know to come and hang out with. The, well, he was just not trying to get he was actually very much trying not to get me. He's trying to get these three <laughs> girls that I was with at a bar to go hang out with the band The Killers at their Ooh. hotel suite and he was like hey like like his like necklaces were jingling like, and like his rings were you know making audible no. noises five rings and this was like in 2008 when five rings was kind of crazy uh like hardcore pirate times and yeah. they were not the girls were not having it. i was thrilled and um but i was like yeah well absolutely go the girls would be <laughs> no don't listen they'd be excited and i was like anyway what does ld stand for and he goes El Diablo. <laughs> and so there you go. You might have met Satan. I might have met Satan. I did. A, a Indie Sleaze Electro Clash mm. Satan. I did go yeah. to the Killer's Hotel room that night unaccompanied. You did? Uh, and th- to the great disappointment of the person who answered the door, uh, and there was no girls or anyone there. And I just ended up stealing all of the toiletries um, that the hotel nice. had. Good for you. So went home and got a bunch of towels and stuff and a coronita. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the you real do. El Diablo of the story the real El Diablo. <laughs> um, Heather and Lisa start to like Heather is obsessed with Lisa's son going on mission and she yeah, needs yeah. to like chill the f*** out yeah yeah get it's over it it's clearly a sensitive subject and I know that all the housewives that's what they gotta do they gotta bring up the yeah. subjects poke, poke, to get poke, the poke. To poke, but it's like to get TV time, right? Like you have yeah. to like sort of instigate all of this. Shit. Okay, okay, I understand the game, but like clearly this is like upsetting her, <laughs> you know? Like, and she yeah. doesn't really have a good answer for any of it other than having to be like, yeah, I'm a shitty mom, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And also, Heather, it's like, I get, yeah, I get she's like clearly traumatized. There's a part of her that still longs to be in the church, I think. Mm-hmm. She's like, a very pedigreed Mormon girl. Like yeah. her family is like steeped in its, the church's history. So like, I get that, but she's like, this is a kid. He's like 17. Yeah. Like pick on someone your own size. I know. And Heather was obviously like brainwashed at some point. So I feel for her having to like go through that as a teenager and then like lose that part of her life. And have to reconcile with that in adulthood but them's yeah, i mean the i've known ex-mormons it's it's tough you know i yeah. knew a girl got uh kicked out of her family for getting an ear piercing when she was a teenager mm. Damn. Whoa. and it's like you know obviously i was like she, i don't think she want to be mormon anyway anyways anymore but like you know you kind of lo- if you grow up steeped in that like you know there's this sort of like missing thing that was there all your life yeah but also like it's even i mean i agree but then also, like, 
Babe, you're on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You <laughs> like you're Real sort Housewives of like of Salt Lake still City. stewing in the in the mix of it. You, you know you what could, I mean? You like you could have moved you, away you from the one Mormon yeah. state. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I mean, if you really <laughs> wanted California. to get out, mm-hmm. you could have. And I don't mean that in a way of a like just move if you don't like it. Like I don't mean it in that way. But like if you're literally trying to like, you know go clear or whatever <laughs> or is it the opposite i can't remember um like get out of there babe like run out of the horror house you know the horror show get out of there yeah i think yeah. she's she's living in like a haunted maze kind of mm-hmm. yeah of like her and i think jack she's like latched on to jack mm-hmm. and you know, she's talking about it with her daughter, who's like, yeah, like, if he wants to do that, that's cool. You know, like, Heather's like, no, is it? it's horrible. It's terrible. There's no saving Jack. Jack's now on his own journey, and it might lead to him getting taken, and Heather has to accept that. Mm-hmm. I love taken. her tying it back. <laughs> Where are you taking him? <laughs> Why'd you take him? I love her Heather going... Is that why you don't want to read my book? <laughs> like it all comes, <laughs> oh, yes, I think it yes. all actually comes back yeah. to like, why aren't you reading my book? What's her book? That's Bad it. Mormon? Bad yeah. Mormon. Yeah. Bad Mormon? Mm-hmm. I mean, That's... I'm a worse Mormon than she is. I'm Jewish. You know? It's like, <laughs> this, you can, bad Mormon. There's plenty the of worse Mormon. Mormons. Exactly. That's one of the worst kind of Mormons you can be. That's... Um, yeah, I think that was that's really what the underlying issue is like she's just mad she wanted Lisa to read her book. <laughs> Which I kind of get. I like that pettiness of like How many people do you think have read Bad Mormon? More than you would think, I bet. Yeah. I don't know if I it was think a that New York these women Times can like her, but yeah, pull product. some fan some fan stuff for sure. It was a seller. I feel it like a- it did great on Kindle. <laughs> Yeah, it oh, feels like uh, a Kindle I, book. There's almost or zero audio. chance a single physical mm. copy was sold. Um, <laughs> yeah, audio. Did she? Well, unless she, did, maybe she reads it. But uh, I, although the, I can't see any of the housewives maintaining the discipline for an audio book yeah. session because that's a, mm. that's a you got to retake it all the time. But um, Prince Harry did. He oh, did, we did an episode on that. I listened to the I entirety know. of it. He is a simple. So with him saying Halo, <laughs> him Prince Harry talking about playing Halo and like reading out screen names in his like measured, like audible, like, exclusive tone is the, one of the funniest things I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. He's a he's a poor unfortunate soul. He's like literally an imbecile. Which is yeah. like, yes, it's, yes. it's rare to use that word on someone, but like he's a full imbecile the shoe supremely fits and soon to be single i bet and not in a like funny weird merry way like he's not like no he's like just like a dumb rich kid who thinks he's really profound yes which is like really and traumatized living trauma trauma (laughs) and then it wants to like repeat the trauma or like relive it all the time with his partner yeah he's He's constantly walking like the funeral procession of his mom at all times. Yeah. Yes. Which yes. is like really horrible, but like you gotta, you know, we have to move past this a little. <laughs> and then no. it's I'm but, sorry. like, but it's like, it's like in the filmed version, it's like all like his brother and his family fades away. And then just like the lady from Suits is beside him. Like, mm-hmm. well, it's like but he's still a little boy. And she's like. <laughs> Megan. If he was if he was like a prince in like you know 1250 or whatever, he would have easily bankrupted his kingdom with just like buying rare yes. parchments and then just like scrawling like doggerel on them. But he like, was like <laughs> so much more charming when he was just like the shitbag party ne'er do well son. Yeah, yeah, he was like really even fine. though like when even when he was like oh I think it's a great idea to be a for halloween which is like that's not a costume you're british but like they're you know it's like they even that was somehow more charming than whatever this like farcical you know spotify exclusive is that they're like shoving down everyone's throats the the biggest non-podcasters in the world (laughs) dude the fact that the fact that they would have somebody come in and actually ask the guests the questions and then Meghan markle would read 
like the questions in an empty studio to nobody to like they yeah. couldn't even have a conversation that is just oh my god i didn't even realize that that's crazy yes, i didn't know they, that either yes they would have producing producers Producies. like actually conduct Producies. Producies. <laughs> they would have a couple of deuces come in <laughs> at the spotify studies and uh and like actually interview i don't know deepak chopra or whatever <laughs> and then megan markle would like come in for like half an hour and like for, in like, an inserts. empty room and for like insert the questions herself. God. God, do you know how like doing? shitty you have like <laughs> yes. how untalented that you easy? have to be for like Bill Simmons to think that you don't have any talent? <laughs> like <laughs> you have to be really <laughs> bad for him it's, to not be like that's a that's a winner. That's on really, my that's on my Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Whatever. It's the fuck really crazy about. too how much like suits is like part of the American fabric now. No, but so, I I have like third eye Netflix on that. The first, the first time oh. you like when you open Netflix, it's like the first thing you see. It's the most streamed show in like Netflix yes. history. It's and they're doing a new. They're rebooting the suits. Re- so I have yeah. my theory. I have twofold theory about that. One is I think it has to just do with like the fact that they were able to pick up syndication rights for something that like had so many. F- seasons and that nobody had really gotten into so Mm. like clearly there was something already about suits that it was able to reach the syndication like whatever the threshold is that they have to do for to get into syndication rights or whatever but like so there was already something there that like some sort of niche audience was watching on like tbs or whatever the it was on before right and then netflix was able to kind of like get this show that already had bingeable amount of seasons that like none of their other shows do because they're like literally making them in real time, you know? And so they're like, Oh, we can give you like seven, eight seasons or whatever this is. of this crap show, which you little piggies just want to watch some trash. And now Mm -hmm. you have it and you've never seen it. And it was like, right when everyone was like caught up in like Markle fever, yeah, and I was like caring synergy. about the yeah. So there was like there synergy also Netflix and documentary. You can watch that, and then you can go binge Suits. Yeah, totally. I remember I knew Suits was coming because I was on a plane this spring, and there was a bro <laughs> sitting next to me watching Suits, and I was Crazy. like, "This is weird." And suits then, is coming. <laughs> suits is coming. Suits is coming. Um, Years ago, I was like out one night like doing blow with like some Hollywood Nepo babies. And one of them turned to me and said, I really love watching suits. And so, oh. you know, what's like, weird what? is that it's a Nepo thing. <laughs> I know. Bizarre, it was a Rich bizarre admission. Show. I know that admission. it was like one of those shows that had a weird online fandom. Like when it was on, it had yeah. like a bit of like robust web board like following of people that loved like whatever those like tv fan websites were back in like 2010 yeah. 2008 whatever it was like suits had like a big one for that it was like one of those niche shows so it's just funny that it was able to kind of like find their second life and it's funny that we were like the writer's strike like we were it's like what part of what we were like striking about was like the people that wrote these episodes that were no getting more suits. <laughs> no more suits. We were on strike about suits, but these show it got streamed like eight, 12 billion times or something. And I like, know. they didn't get any like monetary, like <laughs> no money from that. Yeah. Which is like insane. So yeah. that's like, it's just, it was all like very time. Everything was very like timely and had synergy. Mm. Like you said, suits. Um, but it's yeah, a suits so, world, babe. We're just living suit, in it. It's a suit suits world. Suits is God. somehow like the hotel in The Shining, <laughs> like the way that it has. It's always been there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like there's always been a suits. Like you're looking back in like the radio archives. It's like, God, <laughs> suits. Yeah. <laughs> so, li- so what did you guys it's think? Such a good name for a show. It's like uh, the Usual Suspects end, and we're like going back through everything, and we're just yeah. seeing like Meghan Markle in like a little charcoal gray skirt suit popping hey, up and this like archival footage from the yeah. 1970s. Hey, Lincoln being shot at like a live action theatrical <laughs> showing of suits. 
<laughs> uh, suits, suits on Broadway is coming. Yes. Suits, <laughs> no. Suits the musical. Suits the musical. Suits the musical. <laughs> Pixar suits. Pixar suits. <laughs> um, we bought kind a of suit. Just, I feel like in the last <laughs> ha- the last bit of this, we should just. I need to just like play out this like LD yes. Monica dynamic. It's like truly the scene in Rachel getting married. I know I always talk about Rachel getting married on this podcast, but when. But Anne Hathaway, is, you're and, right. Anne Hathaway and Deborah Winger slap each other. It felt yeah. like truly something we should not be seeing, and it made me yes. deeply uncomfortable. Well, LG keeps trying to shut it down. Yeah, but she's also I mean, the she, MVP, and you know that like she knows exactly how to get under her daughter's skin, mm. and then to see her successfully get Monica to like go off camera. And then sit down in her seat and like continue the conversation. I was like, this woman is a genius and like she needs to be in every episode because she wants it so badly. But she also has crazy eyes. Like she's not to be trusted. Mm -hmm. She's El Diablo. She's El (laughs) Diablo. She's Lil Debbie. She is like, she's, so she, yeah, Monica, like, and Angie go at it. It's like the same shit they've been talking about, about the husband and the room, the rumors and nastiness. But, nastiness. but LD comes over out of nowhere and just goes, stop it. What yeah. are you doing? And it felt so like I've been, or like your mom's like pinching you in church to shut up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. it's like she comes out of nowhere and just goes, what? Keep your voice. You were in someone else's home, and it's like, where did you come from? Well, she was Holy like sitting shit. there, just like staring at them for a long time too. Like she was trying to like take it all in, or like communicate with her eyes. She was doing that kind of like mother's mother knows best, like communication with your eyes of like, look at me and understand. I'm trying to tell you to shut the, f- mm-hmm. you know, and wasn't gonna happen. And so then she no. had to like kind of intervene. And then it was so sad when she's like, just go, just go. I don't know. It made me like very like upset. I felt like I was watching, like you said, I was watching something I shouldn't see. There was like a dynamic, a very, very um, baby Monica. <laughs> like, yeah. When that's like playing out, I was just like, wait, no, I don't want to think of these people as like real people. No, <laughs> I'm like it, it difficult made me inner sad. lives. And when she starts speaking in Portuguese, I was like, oh no. Mm-hmm. You know it's bad yeah. when the parent speaks in like the family's native language. Yeah, yeah, it's unhealed personal dynamic that's like too mm-hmm. raw to be playing out on cameras, like because that's not going to solve any of their problems. But they're here, so I say let's <laughs> keep them rolling. <laughs> Let it yeah. fucking rip. LD goes, "You're both beautiful, powerful women." Like trying to kind of <laughs> broker peace between them. Monica also is very Jen Shaw esque. Yes, she is. Her yeah. humor and her mannerisms. I was like, this is Jen Junior. Mm. A hole well, she's... in the show that needs to be filled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what a hole it was. <laughs> um, she, I will say, like I, I feel for Jen. I feel for Monica. Like this is to be kind of reverting and regressing into like little child mode with your parent you'll never be like seen as a adult to them but i also was like you're in someone's home and like making a scene and like you are the one you're on tv you're on tv doll (laughs) and you're also crew keep your shit together (laughs) keep your shit together doll and also you're the one that like you're the one that said this thing about her husband who's sitting right there yeah that he's off like boinking you know, in like the streets of Salt Lake City. So it's like you're, you know, you're the cause of this and you're acting certainly extremely bratty right now. And I just was like very, I did not like it. Well, I think that like all of these women and this goes across French, this crosses all franchises. Like they like to have it both ways at any given time, which is like, not just am I, am I the victim or whenever I decide I am, but also like, um, oh, we need to talk about this now, but also um, we need to like keep it down because you're being rude to me. The TV, the TV's on. That you know they they want to pr- they want to have like 
Uh, they want to pretend like the cameras aren't there while still also always performing for the cameras at all times. And I know that that's the like crux of reality TV, but we are like so far beyond that. Like it's yeah. 2023 that you just like can't buy any of the anymore you know what i mean no. so when she goes into her baby monica thing it's like on the one hand yes baby monica. <laughs> I, I like understand young monica, young monica. <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever young ellen yeah yeah a portion of monica I, just is a like, young baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i feel for her in the sense that it's like i do think that like what we witnessed was kind of something like a like a primal scene that we should not have like born witness to, but also like, hun, you're on TV, like you're playing a character of yourself, like play this out. You know what you're doing. You yeah. know exactly what you're doing. But that's that's the thing with like a mom or a sibling is like, no matter how much like self-aware you are about the role you're playing they can just they can turn off yeah. family can turn off like they can turn you into lizard brain where you're just like yeah. in survival mode and like you suddenly like fugue and you're like i'm not because monica even at the end when she gathered her daughters and was like you can get your own ride home to her mom <laughs> and she was like come on honey we're leaving we're leaving it was very like i almost think she was like suddenly embarrassed and was like mm. i have to get out of here so fast because yeah. i just forgot that i was on camera totally. yeah and i felt bad because she also was like punishing her daughters who wanted to stay they were like we haven't done the easter egg thing and i'm like this whole holiday is like four children at the end of the yeah. day and you're there making an easter bunny that delivered the invitations i know like you're now making your kids pay for your own like dynamic with your mom so you're basically perpetuating the cycle Absolutely. they're gonna tell their therapist yeah. about this and i wrote <laughs> babies having babies mm. wow it's true and and i also think it was it was there was this amazing moment where like everyone's gathered like doing the money game and you just see monica in the back alone at post fight and she's just staring and i was like haunting oh, i man. will say this at every real housewives mass event like this like a party <laughs> uh, one of them always seems to be like that in the back you know like like i don't know if i've ever been to a, a, a an event where i've like sat like this in the back by myself i would leave like any normal person but like they can't for mo most of the time and so it's like there's always somebody just like kind of pouting in a corner yeah yeah to Maybe find as oneself child. as the powder in the corner, mm. it's like, Ugh. it's bad. Things have and taken it, a wrong turn. And if you don't know who the powder in the corner is, it's you. At, no. the, mass, at the mass event. <laughs> I keep hearing I also, mass extinction event. <laughs> yes, well. I also loved when, like, there's just chaos. Women fighting, like, yelling at each other, hurling insults. And then it cuts to... Angie K's dad just like playing like an instrument <laughs> alone. I was like, that's very beautiful and poignant. He's like, well, think, imagine yeah. how far you'd have to like your life has taken you from like Crete or whatever in the 1960s, <laughs> 1950s, where he grew up in his little simple fishing village. Uh, and then having his daughter like have to call him and be like, so like one of my co workers is going to prison now. <laughs> and like, just yeah. like, like, do you like, like, oh my God. But I'm going to be on the show imagine. full time. So we're <laughs> yeah. going to have an Easter party next exactly. year. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Bring your guitar. Yeah. Imagine, like, yeah, being like this, like, and then your daughter calls you and she's like, so this woman's coming over who says that Sean is like the godfather of Salt Lake City bussy mm -hmm. and like. <laughs> is but we're inviting her and her whole family over so you have to like make nice you know and like yeah. just being like from like macedonia just being like what what, what the fuck is what? my life? i i'm here to take you i'm here to take <laughs> but we invented such methods of love making yeah <laughs> the greek There's way like, there was like that one throwaway line that made me laugh so hard where i can't remember who it was but they're like oh the greek and the portuguese we understand each other yes, so yes, well and i was yes. like i don't think that that i don't think that's true, true. I've never known that to be never heard thing. that one the traditional I think that's right. rise between the greek and the portuguese people <laughs> yeah yeah they both like fish they it was like, ld i think that said everybody that. yeah fish, it was ld though. yeah she was trying 
Uh, LD well, really was, is trying. Because LD she wants kisses, on this show. She wants it bad. LD kisses uh, uh, mm-hmm. the the grand the the elderly Greek fisherman by on the both ch- on both cheeks in the mm-hmm. Greek style, which is actually let's be it's just all Europeans seem to do that. In it's South yeah, American. Uh, it's just in everywhere. South America, people just do but, that. But America, North America, yeah. we just don't do it. And you know what? I'm glad for it. And I, and I'll add in the Commonwealth. They don't do the it there com- either. They don't do it there either. And then the Germany, com- once you get Germany, <laughs> Germany, Germany, once you get Germany, they don't do it there either, which I'm really, that's, I don't, because who knows where those lips have been. Um, <laughs> and uh, they kiss each other and she's like, oh, wow. Like she understands like Greek, you know, Greek kissing. Like, I can't believe my, it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Greek kissing. Greek kiss, that, kissing. If, if the there cheek. is something called Greek kissing, that is not what Greek kissing is. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like some obscure, like a horrible, you know, a, a yogic form of like <laughs> that was invented you know, in, in the, in the, Sean in the bowels of the Parthenon. Yeah, yeah. Sean invented it. Sean, let Sean and his like hairstylist <laughs> assistant show us. Aww. It always, it always unnerves me when a hairstylist wears a hat like that. So yeah, why yeah. hide when he yeah. got into bed? Un- I think it was last week. He got into bed and pulled the covers up, but was also wearing a hat till the very <laughs> end. I was like, this is too far. Hat in bed is insane. Hat in bed is crit. To let a hat touch a pillow is like, you're on a new level. He's a bald daddy. I'm like, lean into it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Go full Bruce Willis. Just Um, embrace it. I don't know. I feel like, I mean, not even because of like the hair. Like, I think. No. no. I don't know if he is. I get my hair cut by a guy. Yeah. I think he's, I mean. There was a moment last week when we were talking, we were recapping it, where I was like, I felt the moment when she tells him, like, there's a rumor about you having sex with men. His face just, like, dropped. And it it felt less like, oh, I've just been outed and more like, this is something I've had to, like, deal with for decades. People have always been like, you're gay to me. Yeah, Yeah, you're gay. And it's like, I felt like... Yeah, I felt like someone just just the horrors of masculinity and like Mm. our society and like that's i felt more like he's a straight man that's just always been called gay yeah and it's like he's not ashamed of it but then i'm like but he also could be gay well (laughs) what also was crazy is that like monica said in this episode that she's heard this rumor for years and yeah she initially represented it like it was like a new rumor on the scene that had just like broken through but it actually has just been like making it a rumor for years to me that makes it like less true because it's mm. just like oh you're targeting a hairdresser the thing is like in, in utah like like everything's different like i went i went i went there i was the last time i was there i went there for something called alpha con which i was kicked out of within well, they actually just didn't even let me in. Um, <laughs> and you got and, COVID. And I got COVID pretty much immediately. It was like a one-two thing. I was it was a short trip and a, a unsuccessful one. But the, what's the AlphaCon? Thing, it was uh, a it's it was kind of like a pre Andrew Tate like like, like a masculinity thing, conference. But it's like Utah style, so all the guys are wearing like <laughs> the tightest, craziest craziest tight pants you've ever seen but also that end like here and then mm. they're wearing like kind of like zip up side boots but the side boots end a little early so it just kind of looks like they're wearing high heels um <laughs> and but they're also all like um it's like a know, sort of pant well, yeah fat i guess the word would be so like they're, mm. they're sort of like spilling over the tight pants but mm. the shirt's also tight and i think they kind of lecture each other on like real estate mlms this is Love definitely that. a mass event, right? They, yeah, it was a mass <laughs> event, and they had a they had a harpist in the lobby, which I thought was crazy. Um, it's not very Joan- alpha. Joanna yes. Newsom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, they, they that's had, they, crazy. She was the musical guest. It was Joanna Newsom. It's like MLM real estate, and then like the Tom Cruise character Magnolia being like, <laughs> yeah, "Tame yeah. the cunt." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do um, think that that that's like what I assume Utah. I think is like. it is kind of. I think it is the tame the. But they all are like they're also in classic Utah style polyamorous, 
uh, but also uh, virtuous husbands. Mm. Mm. We'll only goes yeah. one way. A man can have many wives, but a wife can't have many husbands. Truth. Laura and I, when <laughs> when we went for a sup show, we did like a the day of the show. We like palled around and like went to the Mormon epicenter of Salt Lake City, like with yeah. the tabernacle, and we did like a full tour. And it was like it was pretty wild. We saw like a bunch of like LD like pioneer looking women who like look like fundamentalist Mormon women. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And Laura went to the ancestry place. Oh yeah! To like and they I was almost like, got my ass. They almost got you. They own ancestry dot com, and they own. Um, Do they really? So then they, they own... did get me because I. <laughs> <laughs> All the DNA swabbing things, like you know, like you can find out, like ooh, I'm, um, f- like you know, Albanian or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Those are all owned by Mormon companies. Yeah, and so is one eight hundred contacts, which I use. And they also, yeah, Mm -hmm. you know, they're so nice. Mormons can also (laughs) baptize you after you're dead. Yeah, I know that. um, Much to my shock, as a as a young man, I found out that Anne Frank was Mormon when I was in high school. No, Um, yeah, she they They got her ass. They were. She was like one of the (laughs) first that they got. Cause you Damn. know they were like, oh shit! Like once they like once they made like, that part try of the this thing, out. yeah. They're who like, can we get who's a big get? Let's do <laughs> Anne Frank. Let's we gotta get Anne Gandhi. Frank. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. They'd both course. be like, thanks. Yeah. yeah you oh, can cool. baptize. You can also like, you can atone for someone else after death. Yeah. And like, I guess you get baptized, and then it baptizes them by proxy or something so like sick. that. It's what a convenience. Yeah. 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 They're just making up new rules all the time. Mm-hmm. I know. I'm it's into a it. real DIY <laughs> really thing. Yes. <laughs> I was just Guys, in Utah this weekend. It was beautiful. Why? I was in for the eclipse. Oh. But oh. it is that it was like near Moab. It was a annual or total or like the ring of fire eclipse. Yeah. Totalitarian was it crazy eclipse. Looking? <laughs> yeah, it was really wild, but I was I just kept thinking like I understand why the Mormon pioneers saw this as like the promised land. Cause it mm. is like, it feels like biblical when you're there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty um, wild. Did you Are look you... straight into the eclipse? <laughs> I had the glasses. So I did. I had my cavalier who's down here on like a mm. papoose. A cavalier. A sp- <laughs> uh, yeah. A cavalier spaniel. I'll get him. Show is him. That, is that space behind him too? Oh, you can still hear me. Aww. He's Sweet wearing a angel. Halloween. This is Mango. <laughs> oh, Mango. But he he was, but it felt like I was like, I mean, Moab's pretty liberal, but I was like, this is, the whole state is just such a surreal place. Mm, it's like, yeah. I've ne- it's it's not America. It's really weird. It's its own. Yeah. It's like the, it truly is the wild rat, the wild west and like the it's lack of show. like regulations around stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or then there's too many regulations. You can't have. Yeah. You can't have a, a a nice a nice point. Yeah. Yeah. It feels sort of like a like unchained like id of America. Like the amount of like scammy companies that are able to operate there. The bizarre like weird religious stuff. The the kind of like frontier. You know, everyone just make it make their own way. Like you're kind of on your own in Utah. No one's taking care of you. <laughs> you yeah. Know like what that. I mean. Like racist manifest destiny. Shit. Oh yeah, like, totally. Yeah, it is that is really true. Yeah, and also like as a teenager at therapeutic boarding school is like the one place you never want to end yes. up. Is yeah. Utah. Yes, is you. Like yeah. it's you, everyone knows that that's like the end of the line. They for would you. they would threaten you if like you you'll get sent down to Utah. Like that's mm-hmm. like you're 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 done. Yeah, it's over after that. That or they'd be like you're gonna get sent out of the country. That was Whoa. the scariest one. Wait, Shit. the craziest thing too was when I was looking at schools initially, like we had an educational consultant yeah, who's just course. like the person yeah. that goes between the parents oh, yeah. and um, the schools and like brokers the deal. But I had been researching. I was like, oh my God, there's like boarding schools in Jamaica. Like that seems to, <laughs> and I was literally like, <laughs> no. maybe I want to like be on the beach and I'm so fucked. <laughs> 
glad <laughs> that that did not happen because they literally like put kids in cages in those ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah those places are like, uh, yeah, they're like it's there's like human rights violation. Yeah, like it's that's the end. That's wild. It's I crazy. like this full circle. We began with. I know. I, know. I was just thinking school. I could see Mary getting into the business. Oh, absolutely. Oh, one hundred. Absolutely. I'm shocked. Use that your she words. Didn't send. I could see her having sent Robert Jr. to one of them. Oh. Yeah. I could see her sending Robert Jr. to one of those now. Like yeah. getting yeah. him kidnapped mm. now. Him mm-hmm. and his wife. But her forgetting. Mm. <laughs> She's like, where is he? Where's, <laughs> I don't know. Where's yes. Yeah, and having like a like a Bravo style like. Do, 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 like kind of like happy, confused music playing behind her, like looking in cabinets at her house, like Robert, <laughs> Robert. She asks the fireplace, "Where is he?" <laughs> it's like that that Quentin Tarantino photo shoot where he's just like looking around his house. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being was, on the pod. This was a joy, and like a mega episode and i'm like i feel like it was a gift to have you guys on it was so this great. Is a blast this thank is so you. fun thank you guys for having us we never get to do fun shit like this we gotta do our own dumb show oh my god <laughs> well you're welcome back literally anytime i love yeah. that um, and the next time we're in new york you have we have to like meet irl and be absolutely be yeah, yeah yes. definitely yeah, yeah. 100 percent. i i also I'm trying to, well, I'll tell you after we stop recording. Yeah. Well, if <laughs> right. you guys, I don't think you need to plug yourselves because everyone knows where to find you, but if you want to. That's yeah, tell them where. You. True Tell them what's good. True and <laughs> on. Like, uh, <laughs> one word. But Bray, he's in the cabinets at your house. Look for him there. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm just, yeah, I'm in the, like, the underneath the floorboards looking at, uh, at you. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Yeah. Bye.